Market internals, what are they, how to use them? In this video, we're gonna discuss that and more specifically how we use them in zero DTE trading. If you don't trade zero DTE, no worries. The vast majority of this information is still applicable. First off, what are market internals? Market internals are measurements that provide additional context about the broad stock market performance. It gives us an insight into what's happening beneath the price action. These can be used to confirm a trade thesis, identify divergences, it can be used as a filter in determining a directional bias, and to form a view on realized volatility. There are many market internals, but we will go over the few that we use in our zero GTE trading system. This includes the put call ratio, advanced decline line, volume difference, the tick index, and relative sector performance. We will cover the New York Stock Exchange internals, which encompasses all the S&P 500 stocks. Just to clarify, we are not looking at one particular stock. Rather, we are looking at all the stocks that trade on the New York Stock Exchange. On the chart, we are looking at ticker symbol PCC, which is the put call ratio, looking at both equities and indices on the CBOE. When viewing market internals intraday, we recommend using the five minute time frame, which is what we're viewing here, or the 15 minute if you want to remove some of the excess noise from the lower time frame. As mentioned, a put call ratio of one indicates that there are the same number of calls as there are puts. Above one, puts are greater than calls. Below one, calls are greater than puts. A ratio of one is not necessarily an accurate starting point when trying to measure sediment, as under normal market conditions, participants tend to favor calls over puts. So an average reading of 0.7 is considered a, a better basis for evaluating sediment. However, if it's bear market conditions, puts tend to be more favorable and a put call ratio of one is more suitable. Traditionally, the put call ratio is used as a contrarian indicator. However, that's not how we view it when trading intraday. What we focus on is primarily the trend. Are we trending up? Are we trending down? A rising put call ratio suggests that bearish sediment is building in the market, whereas a declining put call ratio suggests that bullish sediment is building in the market. There is another way to think about the put call ratio, and that is from the concept of dealer flows. If you buy or sell an option, it is likely a market maker or dealer is on the other side of that trade. Dealers seek to be directionally neutral and will establish offsetting long and short positions. In other words, they hedge their exposure this can create additional buying or selling pressure based on options positioning in the market. For example, if you go long a put, the dealer is then short the put and would hedge this exposure by selling stock. Therefore, a rising put call ratio may invoke additional selling flows into the market. If you go long a call, the dealer is then short the call and would hedge this exposure by buying the stock. So a declining put call ratio may invoke additional buying flows. This is a little simplistic and we go over this in much more detail in the options course. However, this is one additional way to think about the put call ratio. Next, we have the advanced decline line, ticker symbol ADD. This compares the total number of stocks that are advancing on the day by the total number of stocks that are declining on the day. And this is based on yesterday's close. Let's assume that this is a daily candle. It's a bullish candle, so we have the open and the close. An advancing stock is a stock that is trading higher than its previous day's close whereas a declining stock is trading below the previous day's close. So ADD is simply the net sum of advancing stocks, less declining stocks. And advanced decline lines 
can be used to determine the strength of a trend and it's a very useful tool in determining or rather generating a view on realized volatility. On the chart, we are looking at ADD, which is the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange. Again, we are viewing this on the five minute time frame. We've highlighted some key levels on the chart, starting first with the zero line. This is considered neutral as it indicates that the number of advancing stocks is the same as the number of declining stocks. Above zero is positive, meaning that there are more stocks trading above yesterday's close than below. Below zero is negative, meaning there are more stocks trading below yesterday's close than above. An AD reading of plus 700, minus 700, around the zero handle indicates low realized volatility, low directional conviction. And in this environment, credit spreads, iron condors tend to perform very well. And if you want to play a butterfly, you may need to select strikes that are closer to the current market price as volatility is lower. Plus 1200, minus 1200, this is a trend and we expect moves within implied volatility estimates. Plus 2,000, negative 2,000, these are extremes. Very strong directional conviction, and we typically see moves beyond volatility estimates. When you see readings like this, you want to be very cautious on taking the counter trend trade, as there's typically some underlying dynamic that is either keeping the market bid or offered which often just creates pinning at that extreme. If you are in positive territory, you probably want to have an upside bias. If you are in negative territory, you probably want to have a downside bias. And if you're trading in that zero handle, you may want to deploy a more market neutral strategy. Volume difference, also known as the volume spread index, compares the total daily volume flowing into advancing stocks by the total daily volume flowing into declining stocks. This, just like ADD, is based on yesterday's close. The ticker symbol is VOLD. VOL simply standing for volume and D standing for difference, which is the difference between up volume and down volume. On the chart, we have ticker symbol VOLD. This is the volume difference for the New York Stock Exchange, and we are viewing this on the five minute time frame. The zero line is considered neutral as it indicates the total daily volume flowing into advancing stocks is the same as the total daily volume flowing into declining stocks. Above zero is positive, meaning that total volume is positive on the day. Below zero, means that total volume is negative on the day. If we go from positive to negative, the total volume on the day flips to negative. Vice versa, if we go from negative to positive, total volume on the day flips to positive. It's important to know whether total volume is positive or negative, but we also want to know how strong that volume is. This indicator, VOLD, it is simply taking this data and putting it into a ratio form. We're going to have two bubbles. We have the New York Stock Exchange as well as the NASDAQ. If the bubble is red, total daily volume is negative. If the ratio is green, total daily volume is positive. A one-to-one -one ratio is considered neutral. Low realized volatility, low directional conviction. This is the same as if we we're trading at the zero line. An uptrend is something like a two to one, a three to one, where an extreme move could be something like a four to one or a five to one. Now, if it's a downtrend, it could be something like a negative three to one, a negative four to one, a negative five to one, and an extreme move could be something like negative eight to one, negative 10 to one. Negative readings are often more extreme than positive readings. Now we can also determine divergences such as we see here, 
where total daily volume is negative on the New York Stock Exchange, but positive on NASDAQ. This further confirms the neutral thesis. Low realized volatility, low directional conviction. It's important to note that this is a snapshot into what's happening in the moment. We cannot go back and look at historical data like we can on the chart. Next, we have the tick index, ticker symbol T-I-C-K. This compares the total number of stocks that are trading on an uptick by the total number of stocks that are trading on a downtick. The tick index has no relation to yesterday's close. We are simply looking at upticks and looking at downticks. An uptick means that the last trade price is above the previous trade price, whereas a downtick means that the last trade price is below the previous trade price. The tick index is very sensitive. Uh, it's the ultimate pulse on the market on a second to second basis. It really only has application on, on a very short time frame. Personally, I don't use the tick. However, it is a very common market internal, which is why we're covering it. On the chart, we are looking at the tick index, ticker symbol T-I-C-K. Again, we are viewing this on the five minute time frame. If a stock is trading on an uptick, it'll be positive. If a stock is trading on a downtick, it'll be negative. Recall, this is measuring all the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. Therefore, this is the cumulative tick. The zero line is neutral. There's the same amount of stocks trading on an uptick as there are trading on a downtick. Generally, the use of the tick index is to identify extremes and fade them. Now, picking tops and bottoms can be a pretty difficult game to play, particularly in a, in a trending market. However, in choppy mean reversion markets, it could be a very profitable strategy. Now on the chart, we've marked out some levels here um, that can be viewed as extremes in different market conditions. If it's a low vol type session, plus 800, minus 800, can be viewed as an extreme reading. If we're experiencing a, a normal market, it's in line with volatility estimates, plus 1,000, minus 1,000 tends to be an extreme. If we're in a high vol market trading beyond volatility estimates, plus 1,400, minus 1,400 should be viewed as an extreme move. Lastly, we have intraday sector performance. This is technically not a market internal. However, it does have great utility in determining risk on, risk off sediment. It compares the relative performance of various sectors. There are a total of 11 sectors in the S&P 500. Some sectors are considered defensives, others cyclical, and we can further break this down into growth sectors, defensives, these companies provide products or services that are essential for basic human life, the necessities. Regardless of where we might be in the business cycle, demand for these products or services tend to be rather stable. Defensive sectors include healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples. On the other end, we have cyclicals. These stocks, the companies within them, are much more sensitive to changes in the business cycle. These sectors include financials, materials, industrials, energy, and real estate. Growth, also is very sensitive to the business cycle. However, we like to separate growth cyclicals from traditional cyclicals as there are many companies within technology, communications that have a very high market cap. And since the S&P 500 is market cap weighted, movements in these stocks or sectors tend to pull the S&P 500 with it. Um, so it's always important to know where is growth? Are they outperforming? Are they underperforming? It gives us a lot of insight into that risk on risk off sediment. This indicator is intraday super sectors and it measures cyclical performance and defensive performance by market cap weighting. 
We have three lines, green, which represents cyclicals, red, which represents defensives, and gray, which is the SPX itself. When cyclicals are outperforming defensives, this can be viewed as risk on or bullish. This is simply represented by the green line trading above the red line. On the other end, when the red line is above the green line, this is signaling that defensives are outperforming cyclicals. And this can be viewed as risk off or bearish. Now, the spread width between the two will give us a lot of insight into the extent of, of that risk on, risk off sediment. If the spread is wide, strong directional conviction, such as this case, where we're seeing cyclicals being led on the upside by quite the margin, that's very bullish. Conversely, cyclicals leading on the downside by quite a margin, that would be viewed as bearish. In this scenario, we may be trending but the directional conviction is not as strong as here or here. Putting it all together, we have the internals dashboard with the put call ratio in the upper panel, followed by the advanced decline line and then sector performance. In the upper right hand corner, there is the volume difference ratio. So we're looking at a total of four market internals and the objective is to go through this and try to determine a directional bias and a view on realized volatility. This allows us to select the, the most appropriate strategy for the current market environment. We go through this process and more every morning in our AM meeting. If you want to join, trade with us, you can visit our website at zerodtetraders.com. Thanks for watching.